All right, everybody, welcome back to Fate of the Rise of Madness. This is session 35, Contracts and Contraband. Now, we are a couple people short, so this title may only be partially true because uh, it's, it's definitely going to be like some of the other ones, a sort of multi-parter. Um, and we're reaching, we've sort of hit a downtime moment moment of rest between events taking place. Uh, the group, most recently, uh, after doing a quest for the Cult of Madness, that ended up not actually being a quest that was done because they wanted you to kill essentially very peaceful treants. You said nope to all that and you headed back and what ultimately ended after some battles in the death of one Frigg Wolfheart, the twin sister of Finn Wolfheart, a uh, previous, a uh, prior companion. Now, at this point, Damakos has fled you keep running into him and he keeps running away because you haven't figured out a way to somehow isolate him. Although I will say... I'll have counter spells in there later. Well, I'll tell you this too, right? The leader of the Cult of Madness, who you all know from Corvus, Corvus's question to his patron, uh, you know it to be Shogoth the Devourer, um, doesn't take overly kindly, at least you assume anyway, given his name, uh, probably doesn't take too well to failure. And Damakos, through your efforts, has been largely unsuccessful. Um, minus a few things that he's managed to pull off, like actually stealing from the Karaki vault and, uh, or some things like that, but his his current campaign has been largely met with failure uh, because of your actions. No way, I don't. It's his fault. Well, <laughs> you've been uh, interrupting a lot of his plans, which is very uh, good for you. That's true. <laughs> Uh, and probably for the greater good, uh, but very bad for him. So whether or not that will have repercussions, we shall see. But for now, he's gone. And Foreshadowing. You have, and you have a lot of fun things to loot here. Oh. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. Hmm. Goodness. All right. Okay. Let's talk. There were five tents. What is that? Oh, okay. This is a message from you. Oh, it was me asking if you could hear me earlier. Yeah, I got you. Um, there were five tents. <clears throat> the fifth tent that was investigated last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, was just a storeroom full of mundane items. You kind of search through it. I'm not even going to make you roll for this. So you're not in combat anymore. There's no more cultists. Everything's dead at this point, other than you guys. Uh, and you begin to sort of comb over the place. So finding all the stuff is just a matter of time. So there's no point in making you roll investigation checks. For the most part, at any rate. Uh, so we'll kind of go over everything that we I have. Think, uh, I think your mic is like cutting in and out a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, like for some... I don't, it's like uh, cutting off the last bit of your words. I don't know if, if, I, if it's just cutting off because you're getting softer or not. I'm just, Maybe. I'm just saying. Uh, okay, I will try to be more vocal. 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 Is this better? Yas. Good. Trying to bring it up maybe a little bit too. Okay. 
fair enough. I do have a tendency to drop my volume at the end of my sentences a little bit, so I will be try and be more mindful of that. I forgive you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> One of the tents, uh, we'll, we'll kind of just go through the, we'll, we'll go through them in order, that they were looked into last time. First tent has that, had that sort of briefcase sized container. Uh, it did have a, it, was, it looked like a sort of, we'll call it a fantasy briefcase. Uh, because, you know, just a fancy hard sided container that happens to have a handle so you can tote it easily all right <clears throat> it is locked so we'll we'll kind of just so just for now know that it's locked wait is there a, is there a keyhole yes a pee hole there is Could a good eye <laughs> there is a keyhole yes. there is a keyhole <laughs> like all right so I'm making sure there's a keyhole on this. Could I use my robot finger to to maybe pick the lock? Like go go gadget lock picks? Yes. Um I have that for some reason. Do you you have lock picks? Uh, I take them from You can borrow uh, canes. Yeah, I'll borrow canes. I'm gonna try to Okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> Give me a lock picking roll. Are you you're not proficient in lock picking? I don't believe. I am. I am not, but I do so, have luck points. So okay. I am going to try that. Okay, so it's going to be a uh, roll a d20. We're going to add your dexterity modifier, and I guess if you use a luck point, you can roll a d. It's a d8 or is it d10 now? So it's a you said a d20 plus my dex modifier. Yeah. And it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a 10 now. No, 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 no. I think the next level, next, because we're level eight, right? Yes. Oh, so it becomes a D10 at level nine. Yeah. I think it becomes a D10 at level nine. I think it's the next one. Cool. So I think it's a D8. Good deal. All right. So, let's, all right. let's see so, that roll. Roll D20. Two. Okay. And then and roll your. That's a good roll. Yeah, no. Dude. <laughs> uh, so one d. Yeah. Oh, and that's a shit roll. Oh, no. no. <laughs> okay. Uh. You go to. Wow! You rolled a one. <laughs> Out of one, 16 Ew. plus two. So it's my dex, nothing else, right? Nothing else I can add to that. Uh, can you, do you get anything that just naturally adds to your skills? Uh, oh, I get a plus one. I get a plus one into things I'm not proficient in. Dude. So it gives me a 20. That is exactly that's... what you needed. <laughs> that is amazing. Cause I was like, you're gonna that, that's a failure and it's by one like man that sucks uh yeah. but 20 will do it actually hey. um it's a struggle because oh yeah <laughs> it's a tiny lock and you're not proficient in this but as luck would have it uh you are able to hear that faint little click and it opens up and it reveals 30 small uh, vials that are full oh. of varying colored liquids, mostly red. Excellent. 30 uh, small vials. Yeah. You can very easily deduce that this is... Uh, these are vials of blood. Some okay. creatures don't have red blood. So they have different colored blood, and that's oh. where that's that's where you're kind of seeing the different colors. Um, example, like plant folk have like green greenish blood. Sort of looks like a vegetable smoothie, kind of color. And Very, I'm guessing this is the blood of 
the uh, the the, <laughs> the people with some the of, amulet. Some of the people who have uh, joined up. Yes. Ah, uh, all right, Krishna. I know you have no one else to talk into bad ideas. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> Gonna, we're yeah. the cult of madness is bad people. I'm just gonna head to say it. Like I'm not that proficient in uh no. democracy or whatever. <laughs> uh Krishna, go ahead and roll me percentile dice, please. Serendipity. Or just do slash R one D one hundred or D one hundred and it'll that'll be fine. There we go. Ba bing. Seventy is very good. Very, Indeed. very good. Um, let me do one for Quetzal. Ah, <laughs> lovely. Okay, cool. So, um, and that was actually kind of what I said it to Krishna. You guys are getting so lucky. Uh, <laughs> One of the vials in this little briefcase chest is, like, they all have names. They're all kind of labeled uh, in different languages. And one of them, you find, is labeled as Krishna in Draconic. Krishna! So Most excellent. you are able to find yours. You do not find Quetzal's because uh, he's like he starts reading through it once you find yours, and no, it's not in there. So someone still like the cult of madness still has his blood, but they no longer have yours. Hey, okay. there we go. So bonus, bonusy bonusness. Oh, my favorite. Yes, yes. Uh, there. So, next tent. There's nothing else in that, by the way, besides vials of blood. And it's uh, sort of very interiorly padded and set up to, specifically to hold vials of blood. So, I mean, you could maybe down the road use it for crafting uh, or like holding little potion vials or yeah right yeah something along those lines potion room we'll have a potion cellar in there potions it'll have the strongest yeah. potions <laughs> you need your strongest <laughs> potions uh, you know yeah i could certainly see something like that especially when we get um a fort or some shit have you seen that video will i don't think so okay after we're done here we'll have to link you over to that unless you want to just look it up uh gosh what is that guy's name it's called potion seller and he does this skit by himself and it's like the funniest shit it's so good oh yeah uh, but more on that later if for, for those of you watching i highly recommend that video it's hilarious but i digress the second tent that had the foot locker in it I know this was two weeks ago, so you probably don't remember most of this as far as Kane running around and, and looking into the tents. Uh, but this one has a uh, had a footlocker in it, and there's like a cot and stuff like that. So beyond that, there really isn't much more value. It's just like mundane items, some cutlery, uh, travel, cookware, that sort of stuff. Nothing of particular note or importance. <clears throat> the footlocker is not locked. You can you see that it can be locked, but it is not currently locked. And inside is a bag that clinks with the sound of Draka. Uh, on this hey. bag, and this is a very important aspect of this, on this bag is the Koraki family crest. And when you open it up, all that you see in this bag are green draka. Ooh, shit. 
Very nice. So you find in this bag 100 green draco. Oh my god. Which wow. is essentially 10,000 gold worth, you know, 10,000 white draco. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. And what's on the um on the bag? The Koraki family crest. Koraki. Uh, it's Kane's family. Oh. And a uh, quick reminder uh, and this is sort of, if you had forgotten about this, the next thing that happens is very, uh, very much a reminder when uh, we'll say that Clank is in there and he picks up the bag of money, right? As soon as your group, anyone in your group, picks up the bag right there, there's a weird like chime kind of noise coming from Kane, right? Oh. And he's like, what the hell is that? I, I don't, I'm, what? I don't, I don't understand. Like, why is this? What's going on? And he kind of digs through his pack and he finds, he pulls out the contract that you guys had signed uh, for like from the Crocky family, right? And in a space that was blank before, there's a new new text has appeared, hmm. and it says uh, recovered money. And there's like a there's a colon at the end of that, and then below it, it says 100 green draca. Oh. Uh, and then, of course, at that point, it would say, because you get the payout that you get upon the return of the money is either 1% of what is recovered or... 50,000 white draca, whichever is greater, right? So your payout right now is not that great because it's right. one green draca. Well, I'd say that. It would be 50, but that's not really enough to justifiably return. Like, this is all we got. <laughs> they would be like, you need to go get more. <laughs> you yeah, go, right. You need to go get the rest more. of it. More! we got to go steal the rest of it. Yeah, uh, but you are able... Uh, you, you know, also, this is a, a important reminder, uh, in the contract, any of the Karaki money that is spent will come out of the payout, right? So let's say that you recover enough that you could spend 50,000 white draca, right? Well, if you do that, and then you return with whatever's left, that's fine. You just won't get any payout because you've already spent it. What if we spend more than what we're getting paid? But if you spend more than what <laughs> is being paid, then you'll have to work that off. Or, oh, shit. Or, gotta work it. <laughs> or if you flee, then they will be contacting Penumbra. Can we just say Kane will pay, up, pay them back and leave? No. He, no. <laughs> That's not how that works. Yeah, it, it's your family. <laughs> no, but that's very funny. Um, okay, we're going to actually, for a brief moment, we're going to skip uh, the third tent because that's going to be the big one. Fourth tent was just, um, it was just a simple like dwelling type tent. There were a few scraps of paper that look like they were torn. So it was probably where they wrote like missions for people to go on and little notes to send out or whatever. Uh, the scraps of paper Jeez. don't really have anything of, of note upon them. Uh, there are a handful of coins 
on the table. You can, it's maybe a total of like 10 white Draka. Um, but that, that doesn't count. Like, that doesn't update the sheet, the contract. Oh, I see. So that's just for whoever wants it. I mean, you can just take that clank if you want to, or Krishna, or whoever. I mean, it's not really. It's it, it it would be enough that you could live comfortably, like for some time in a town. Okay. Uh, then I I take all ten. Okay. Yeah, because like, and I might you, be able to get some talking money. You you could <laughs> you could uh, stay much longer realistically because you don't have to eat or drink that's tr- or <laughs> that's true really beep, don't beep, beep, beep. even need a bed i mean you can just find a place and just power down as long as it's reasonably safe it's like i'll just stand behind the bar and look like a statue you have back there I'm like, all right cool whatever <laughs> i'm just gonna sit over here and just dance in the corner a little bit there you go uh the fifth tent was the storeroom of mundane items so there's like food rations there's rope and some mundane how much weapons food? how much food is there um well it's a pretty big operation there so you you find several barrels you could we should I, um i want to take all the food and put it on the ship to give it to a town okay you could also keep it on the ship for yourselves because uh, you do have to eat on your journeys yeah um, I don't usually focus on that unless it becomes relevant. Like if you're right. deep underground or whatever, like food is typically readily available to you. Yeah. Uh, so it's not really an issue. Same reason I don't, I don't do in- encumbrance because that's a pain in the ass. Yeah, no, that would be. <clears throat> so if you know, you can reasonably carry just about anything. Um, then I'll let you carry it. You know, you can't I carry Krishna. Yeah, you can't like put a dragon in your pocket. You know? Oh, don't tell me I live my life. I already got one there. <laughs> Not how that works. <laughs> but if it's if it's within reason, then we're good. I see. The third tent, the sort of middle tent, the the primary tent, where in fact Domikos was. Uh, you find a bigger chest. Oh, good. Uh, sort of, uh, it's almost like a, ho- uh, like a hope chest size. Like, it's a big, it's a big chest. You put a lot of stuff in there. And this one is also locked. Um, the big locked chest has no discernible lock without any kind of check I can tell you that there are um, magical very lightly faintly glowing runes on this chest um, that I would venture to say you both are if not intimately familiar with at the very least kind of can get the gist of what they're for which is to protect uh the the chest itself from being physically broken because you know you're gonna have the fanciest lock that you want but if your chest is just a mundane chest you can just hit it hard enough and it'll break so see so we can't we can't see the lock there is no discernible lock um, the only sort of different, uh, so it looks to be of wood that's been magically strengthened, right? It has iron banding, sort of your classic like piratey looking chest, but it's a, like one of the big ones. Um, the only sort of different thing that's on it is there is a smooth panel on the front where where a lock would be that bisects the lid of the chest and the sort of upper the sort of bottom lip of the opening so it's like a smooth plate it appears to be square in shape 
and it just sort of like covers both. So that's that, that appears to be the thing that's holding it in place. Um, there are hinges, of course, because it does have a lid and open. Um, but any sort of... It doesn't do damage to you or anything, but you, you can't get it to release the hinges or anything. And we'll say for the purposes of this that you actually try that. Because that's a very feasible way to try and open chests. <laughs> By, like, with without having to deal with locks or traps. Um, if you want to look more into it, I will need an investigation check. All right. From whomsoever. Now, Quetzal and K Kane are still there, so they can, if you want. Yeah. Let me look at their sheet. One of them to do it. Oh, Which I can only see their bio. Well, are, are any of them proficient in investigation? I believe I mean, we, we, we could all that... just give it a shot, right? Like, we're all just looking at it. Yeah, I mean, you're you're more than welcome to try it. Um, let me... I can actually pull up... <laughs> I don't see <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, plus one of this. Oh, I see a little bit more than you. <laughs> right? <laughs> let me see. I can't see what you rolled. I haven't... Oh, goodness. You both roll a five. Oh no, you get uh, plus one. I got plus one, so that's six. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that's not, it's no bueno. Um, <laughs> let's see. Investigation. Oh, yeah. There you go. And he has, uh, we'll say that he's going to use, that's for Quetzal. He, because Quetzal is proficient. Um,. He'll use his hat, his magic hat, his uh, Sherlock Holmes hat, for advantage. Nice. Is that better? I can't see. Yeah, that's oh, good. That's real good. That's real good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. That's great. All right. Very good. And uh, so he, he sort of, he, he doesn't touch anything, like, by the panel. But he looks all around it very closely. Uh, he has his little multicolored bubble pipe going because uh, it's funny and it's, it's a good image. <laughs> but he finds yeah. very faintly scrawled beneath the panel. Written in common, although it appears to be a bit of a, like a, almost frantic uh, type writing. But it says, uh, expedient chaotic sacrifice. It is, that's, this, those three words together. Take, take that for what you will. <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, it is very clearly magical. So if you want to try to discern any additional information in that regard, you can try Arcana Checks. It doesn't uh, um, doesn't Quetzal have a real good um, like uh, a magical artifact check or whatever? I will see about his. I think so. I know that Kane does. I recall he likes to do that. Yeah, he has a plus eight, so nice. he can't get advantage on it, but he can definitely roll. Right. Boop. Okay. Is that is that okay? Is that good? Nope. <laughs> that's bad yeah he, he doesn't he, he can't glean anything more but even if you're untrained in it I will let you do it so if, okay. you, want, if you want to try it feel free what, what um, role is yeah, it? Well. Arcana Arcana yeah alright plus one <laughs> god damn it <laughs> you keep rolling shit <laughs> <laughs> ah 
yeah, it, it's too. Uh, well, let's. There's one more person that can try this. Let's see what Kane's got. You never know. I kind of doubt it. He's not training Arcana, but we'll see. All right. Six. Wow. Okay. I'm going to pour a little bit of blood on it. Of uh, your blood? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to, like, drip it on there? Or. I'll, I'll, I'll actually, like, cut a place on my arm so I can pour some fresh blood on it. Okay. Like, are you touching it? Or are you just like, having it drip over? Drop it, dropping the blood on top of it. Okay. I gotcha. So. Um, you make a little cut on your on your like forearm, say right. Um, it, it wouldn't even really be enough to do damage. Maybe like one point, but right. Uh, and it kind of drips down onto this panel, and you kind of you wait. A few moments pass, and nothing seems to be happening. Hmm. There's just blood on the panel now. Well, right. let's say that. Let's back up a little bit. When you do that, the blood pours over it, but it almost seems like it's uh, hydrophobic, right? So like it just yeah. it doesn't it doesn't stain it, off it or it. stick to it or yeah. anything. Uh, but it does. The blood does sort of like stick to and drip down the chest itself you kind of obscure a little bit of the text but beneath the panel interesting yeah any ideas what exactly does it say again um it says expedient ex sacrifice it says ex expedient chaotic sacrifice hmm. Cain, when he was looking through the the tents and stuff, didn't see the chest being opened. It was already opened when he looked in and saw the money being put into it. So he, he doesn't really have any kind of insight there. Um, yeah. ideas not really other than just killing somebody <laughs> he's like i just want to murder someone <laughs> um, that, that, that i can't, can't really do so okay give me just roll a d20 and if you uh uh add your intelligence modifier I don't think I have any intelligence. Clank, I will give you. For what I'm thinking you about here, I'll give you advantage on this. So just do like roll 2d20 and then we'll just take the higher one. Alright. 14. Okay. You search your mind. Uh, what is your intelligence modifier, Clank? Mine is it plus two, um, plus zero plus intelligence? Where is it? Oh, zero. So, plus, oh. yeah, zero. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I am a okay. dumb robot, <laughs> I yeah. just don't understand how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, you begin to uh, search your memory banks as it were to use some fun little sci-fi phrases and you and this is this goes way back like from when Evander was still alive oh shit way back so this is a deep deep memory 
but you remember in Ganrock where you were created, which was that's the big high technology gnomish gnome city area, yeah, it's deep underground. Uh, <clears throat> some places would use a panel similar to this to safeguard certain locations, right? And like, you know, a gnome, say the, the, the owner of the, that area or whatever, would place his or her hand on this panel and it would, I guess, read it somehow using magic and then recognize, oh, that's so-and-so, and the door would open or the chest would open or whatever would open. And he was, the, he was the person that was doing this, like putting his hand there? Oh, this is just like memories you have of the city itself. Oh. It's like you just remember that being a thing but okay. you haven't seen it since Ganrock, so it's very uncommon uh, magic technology. But because of your background, you understand that what it is. This is some kind of magic scanner thing, um, and it looks similar to ones you've seen. But this panel is. Uh, darker of color than the ones that you remember and it could just be because it's made of a different material or it's enchanted by someone else or whatever uh, but it does have it's different in its and it's in the format that you remember but it's very familiar to you that way so then I guess I snap out of it Yes, so Krishna, and I guess everybody that's sort of around you sees your, uh, like your your eye, your eye color changes uh, to different one while you're sort of in internal mode, uh, and then it sort of returns to normal, and then you can beep 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 all that information yep. that you want to do. Um. I want to go up to the chest, like, I guess in front of everybody, and yeah. then say, open sesame, and then I'll put my hand in front of it. So, okay, here's what's going to happen. Okay, so you walk up to it, you say, open sesame, and you put your hand, you put your hand on the panel? On the panel, yeah. On the panel, Okay. Um, everyone around you so you put your hand on the panel and then your vision goes dark right oh. um, everyone who is standing around you there isn't any visual change to you but you do appear to be very statuesque like you're not moving of course you don't really breathe in the conventional sense uh, so when when you stand still it's like your statue and that is kind of the case here so there isn't any immediate understanding that there's something awry right right um, but you find yourself in darkness all right and then the darkness begins there there begins to be some contrast and the darkness sort of coalesces in front of you uh, into a, a terrifying mass of Ooh. shadow uh, tentacles and toothy maws 
uh, you find the vision to be terrifying. Uh, and it's not just like normal terrifying. It's magically terrifying. Uh, so I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Can do. Woo. Um, we're gonna use a luck point. Okay. Um, actually, if I will do. If you me, um, you you'll get a bonus on that. If what? If you're standing close to me, you get a um three point bonus. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I guess it would be. Um, I get three luck points on this, so I will. You gonna do a reroll? Reroll, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. That. Uh, so plus three. <laughs> so bad. And then I'm gonna use so now an at... actual luck point. Okay. <laughs> so you're at 13 right now. Let's see yep. what you got. Let's see what you got. Alright. Dear lord. Alright. Ooh. Okay. So. 20. 20. <laughs> <laughs> nice dude oh god that is amazing okay nice. so you manage uh to again just make the dc uh so as of right now you're able to keep it together but you could you could feel that like the fringes of your mind were starting to fray a bit uh and you have avoided a long-term insanity. Oh, uh, God. So that's good. I tell the bird band to touch this. Thing. No, <laughs> no, no. You don't see any of your friends. Oh, God. You're in a different place. Uh, and the, the creature, the creature in front of you which you don't immediately understand because it has uh, I'm trying to think of a good like reference point for this uh, you have any pictures to show kind of but it'll be easier to describe okay here's here's a are you familiar with Helsing? Yes. Okay. So when Dracula uh, or Alucard, whatever his name is, Alucard uh, goes crazy mode and it's sort of this like visceral thing of eyes and teeth and shadowy uh, tentacles. Yes. Stuff. Oh, damn. That's 100% what this guy kind of looks like. Cool. Uh, I understand why I'm terrified now. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't become humanoid or anything. It stays in this weird, horrifying state. And a name trickles into your mind. Uh, and you will immediately understand who this is or what this is. And it is Shogoth. Shogoth. The Devourer. <clears throat> and after that, and again, it's, it's not precisely in your mind, but it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. But you hear question actually uh, and it's vo it's vocalized in a uh, it's a very <coughs> deep kind of sounds like claw Sorry. from inspector gadget uh, oh oh uh, <laughs> that's a good way to put it i see i hear it now you know and it's i, I can't 
I'm, I'm not gonna uh, do that because that will wreck my voice if I do that. So we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that. But the first question is, why are you worthy? And you can feel when this question is is posited to you. You can feel that. creeping madness in your mind and you know that there is an answer that it is looking for uh, a specific answer and failure to deliver that answer will likely result in <clears throat> another saving throw oh okay so <clears throat> why are you worthy um do you have any ideas of like wanting to try and find uh, additional insights and things? We can make some rolls for that if you'd like. Uh, that I would love to roll some insights. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would love that. <laughs> okay. So I can roll insight on. Well, um, it can be any skill if you can justify it to me. Okay. Um, so he asks, why am I worthy? Mm -hmm. um, I say, uh, okay, I want to I want to kind of look at the area I'm in. Is, is it pure blackness and it's just me and him in this area? Essentially, yes. Um, you're kind of in like a shadow plane. I mean, that's what I'm like. I'm picturing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feels, it, it, it seems very much like a shadowy plane. Um, uh, it's kind of like, uh, if somebody turned the light off in the hyperbolic time chamber. Oh. So it's very disorienting because there isn't really like, uh, for example, any sort of lines that would discern or, or, or like let you know uh, where the floor is versus the walls and stuff. Uh, and it's very disorienting. And of course, it there is like the light is coming from somewhere, but it's unclear exactly what direction it's coming from. Um, and it's very, very faint. So All right. it's just enough that you can really um, make out Shogoth. Then I say, uh, I know that I'm on a great mission and I, and I'm sure, unsure if this is actually my purpose. So, without knowing what I am, uh, I know I am worthy, but would this be worthy of me? Would, would this be worthy of me? I gotcha. That is uh, not the answer he was looking for. Damn. Uh, unfortunately. But, the good news is, you can remake the saving throw. All right. Oh, God. And that's uh, wisdom, right? Yes. Fucking uh, look point. So you're at 12. <laughs> oh, man. Hang on. <laughs> you have to roll an 8. I have to roll an 8. Then I'll just re-roll. I'll just re-roll. Okay. So that's your second look. Yes, luck beat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, come on, son of a bitch! Oh my god. Okay, thirteen. That means you can roll a seven or an eight. A seven again? Uh, you can. Can't you use more than one luck point to roll more dice? Uh. I thought you could. Maybe it's just one at a time. I thought it was just one at a time. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't pull up the PDF for some reason. Hmm. 
but I'm cool with that. We can roll with that right now, because I will. <laughs> well. Uh, it's up to you. Yes, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Now, hang on. You have to choose yep. how many luck dice you're going to use. Uh, two. How many two luck points, points you're going to use. You're going to use two? Okay. Yeah, two. Let's get them to our rolls. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, wow. Jesus. <laughs> that blows. That blows. Uh, that, that sucks. That sucks real bad. Yeah. So you feel that intrusion of the madness of Shogoth. And this time it manages to seep in. Mm. And for the next, uh, I believe, long term madness is over the course of days. Wait, hang on. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just going to be screaming at night a little bit. <laughs> no. In darkness. No, no, no. I have. Uh... Oh no, it's hours. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's good at least. So it'll be. Oh no. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> so this lasts. Let's do. Uh... It's one d ten times ten hours. So. Okay. Roll me a d10. Alright. I swear to god, if I actually roll high on, <laughs> on this shit... Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. Okay. So this is gonna last 100 hours. Goodness gracious, what is that? Two, three, <laughs> four days? Four days. Okay. Yeah. Now, give me a percentile roll and we'll see oh, what, this... what the madness effect is. He furiously shits himself. 30, right? Yeah. Okay. You suffer extreme paranoia. Oh, okay. And, and you have disadvantage on wisdom and charisma checks. Wisdom? <laughs> Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All man. right. That's, All right. That's great. And uh, the answer to that question uh, kind of seeps in uh, through the madness, and you can't help but say it. And uh, it's, uh, on only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. All right. Yeah, or like something like like I am. I am not worthy. I am not. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, second humble. Question. Mm. <laughs> second question is from where do you get your strength uh thunder. what no i say thunder is that what you said evander evander uh, oh <laughs> I, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say you give me strength <laughs> your strength gives me strength Okay, not technically the answer he's looking for, but give me a persuasion check. You are the one beneath my wings. And this uh, is... No, I'm guessing this is like some big ass evil guy. So I'm gonna completely oh, be like, you know who you're... Shogoth is. I know who Shogoth is. Yeah. Uh, is it like Cthulhu ish? Because yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Kind of, kind of sort of. Yeah. Okay. Um. Certainly. Uh. So you know the name Shogoth because Corvus asked uh, his patron, Sphinx, who the head of the Cult of Madness is. Oh. And it's this guy, or this thing. Oh. Shogoth. Oh, the oh okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, so persuasion, huh? Persuasion at disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so where is it? Give me them bar rolls. So, 
It's a plus one, so it'd be a eleven. No, you already get. Hang on. It's plus. I'm not, I'm not proficient in it, so I get a plus one to it. And yeah, it's a lower roll, so it'd be okay. ten. That's so it'd be eleven. Let's see. Hang on. Uh, it's ten because you rolled a nine and it's plus one. No, 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 no. I, I already had one on it. Oh. And because I, of I can't your charisma. Right. I can't figure okay. out how to add plus one to everything I'm not proficient in. Oh, I gotcha. It would be like a miscellaneous. Okay. I, I understand now, clearly. Um, Eleven. Okay. Since you're already under the effect of the madness for now. And by the way, I, I like pre-rolled on the madness table just to see if I would get something cool as like the default. And I got the same thing that you did. So uh, that's yeah. very funny that it kind of worked out that way. Um, so this one. He or it, let's say he, it's not really, there's no way to discern a gender of or, this thing. Or, or uh, it. 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 Uh, sort of says, uh, it just kind of, it's, it doesn't have conventional, like, bone structures, but it, you know, it, it, it you can kind of tell it, it it nods in a sort of weird, disturbing way. Uh, and it liked that answer a lot. So that's good. Uh, it wasn't the answer it was looking for, but it's a good one. And then the final question is, what is it you seek? What is it you seek? The Holy Grail. The truth. <laughs> The truth. Yes. Uh, it's it waits, like that, as as though that's not enough, uh, of, of of an answer. Um. Uh. The truth of why. <laughs> uh, and I mean that in all seriousness because uh, why <laughs> that is hilarious uh, I love that that's very good <laughs> the truth of why uh, it's so random <sighs> yeah I know that's <laughs> That's what happens when you face the thing that. Okay. Yeah. You know. This one <laughs> is going to be a harder DC, but uh, this is not the answer he's looking for either. Damn. So, uh, and by the way, you didn't like. You don't want to roll any kind of insights here. Yes. Uh, uh, hundred. Uh, um. Okay. We'll, we'll. But I, We'll back up a little. Because you you forgot to do that for, for yes this. oh god so, um, let's see what you got so yeah I'm gonna roll an inside I guess it's disadvantage as well yes because you are insane right now <sighs> I'm insane <laughs> crazy bastard now I don't do I still get a plus three from Krishna at all or no yeah this is not this is a check not a saving throw is it on wisdom. Uh, it's on wisdom saving throws. Saving throws. I feel you. Okay. Yeah, this is so not 14. a saving throw. Fourteen. Okay. Um, you you've already kind of figured out that this creature is whatever it is uh, has some degree of a high opinion of itself, and given its power, that you can like literally sense uh, as, it's, as it rests before you uh, it's not wrong <laughs> you know uh, mm. it's kind of one of those things like I'm, I'm stupidly powerful and I know it so 
what are you gonna do about it kind of a thing uh, so there's a, there's a degree of vanity there you also know again from Corvus because I think you got this information I'll have to go back and look but let me give it to you now Shogoth wants through <coughs> through the cult of madness Shogoth is trying to ascend to become the god of chaos oh yep <laughs> okay stab it phone sorry guys <laughs> that's my notification noise <laughs> So, you, again, the question is, what do you seek? What is it? What is it you seek? And with that role, you understand a handful of things. Number one, Shogoth is vain. Yes. And number two, Shogoth is trying to ascend to godhood. So. Okay. Take that as you will. Mm-hmm. And, then uh, I, I know a better response now. <laughs> what is your response? Uh, and and state the question one more time. What is it you seek? Uh, I seek to make you to to assist you on becoming a god. That is the right answer. I had like my my note was your ascension, but that works. You basically yeah. just said that in as many words. I said it as a robot that's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> so. says now that you have some madness of your own you answered my questions you are worthy and then it uh, oh my gosh shut up <laughs> Dog. you're barking right Dog. in the microphone Dog. you're so rude <laughs> hang on <laughs> And you find yourself standing back uh, with your compatriots in front of the chest, and the chest clicks open. Um, you are extremely paranoid right now. How that manifests, I leave to you. But you'll be paranoid for the next, like... <laughs> four days essentially yeah uh, the max <laughs> he, he thinks that we're all trying to open his panels take him actually apart. I think I'm human and you're trying to open me the entire yeah, time <laughs> your, your hey if, if that's how you want it to like manifest then that's fine that whatever, whatever, however you want that to be uh, <laughs> uh, but it clicks open and you find a lot of good stuff in there. You find bags of coins with the Karaki family pressed on them. 
reasonably large bags. Uh, and let's see. book can you hear me a book yep, yep. Okay. Thing. there's a book um, on the spine of the book did I just grab anything I'm trying to see where I wrote that down fair play okay it's a book called elders It appears. Scrolls. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, although that's funny. It is just. It's just called Elders. It's, it's on this. It's written on the spine. And the book itself looks to be. Even though it's. It appears to be very, very old. It's in very good shape. Um, okay. The vellum is not even discolored through time uh, and it is clear immediately upon seeing this book that it has some degree of power uh, I I guess I I, uh, I don't even say I'm going to touch it. Like, I, I just hand it to somebody else. Whomever the closest person is to me. I guess it's Krishna. I hand it to you. And I'm just like, I don't want this. <laughs> and I highly recommend not opening it. Yeah. Um. And I go stand in a corner. <laughs> With that, I think that this will be a good place for us to... Pause. I our uh, to have our little break, and then feel free to talk among yourselves. I'm not going to mute the desktop audio like I did last time. Uh, I'm going to leave it even on our break time screen, and then we will uh, we'll come back in. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or so. Sounds good. Yep. That works for me. And uh, we will. We'll be right back, and we'll talk about the rest of the stuff that's in the chest. All right. Break. 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 